Kia ora. Welcome to Room 2 News. I'm Alonzo. And I'm Olivia. In today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping, sweeping the country in the form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We help them find it. In the latest in weather around the country. But first, a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house. And before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky abode was built as a tourist attraction, as well as being a comment on the state of the world. The house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof, and has steel beams in the attic. Inside the house, there are beds screwed into the ceiling, upside-down wardrobes, an upside-down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom, though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet. Normally, a house like this would take three weeks to build. This one took over four months because workers kept getting confused by the strange angle to the wall. Many tourists visiting the house complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. We now cross over to our reporter, Johnny, who is inside the house how are you feeling, Johnny? Down, but this upside down house will get turned around the right way. Okay, what comment do you feel about the house that makes the state of the world? Well, when I was a little kid, I used to think the world was upside down, but now it really is. What are some of the challenges of living uh, in a house where everything's upside down? The, they'll fall down. Okay. Um, what are you thinking of making in the future? Um, an upside down car. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Johnny for Room 2 News. Back to you, Olivia, in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. Even watching that makes me feel dizzy. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out, Harry Potter. The world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak, which can hide objects by bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled using special tiny crystals that makes objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects, such as coins, disappear. But hope that this won't be long before they are hiding cars, planes, and even people. People have always dreamt of making themselves invisible, one top scientist says. The possibilities are endless and we are all very excited. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have been having trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it just disappears, the inventor of the cloak said. It appears they are having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think may be underneath the cloak. What will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak, here's our on-the-spot reporter Bianca Chagua with more on the story. Hello, I'm Bianca Mielaska, and with me is one of the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi Mike and thanks for joining us today. What made you want to invent the invisibility cloak? You see, then when I was a little girl, the five year olds always used to push me in the bin. What do you hope the invisibility cloak will be used for? Evil. Can you be more precise with what type of evil? Water bombs. What type of water bombs? Evil water bombs. Okay. Can you show me how the invisibility cloak works? You put it on, and then go this way. Um, Mikey, are you here? No, I'm in Russia. You're where? In Russia. In Russia? Um, well, thanks for joining us wherever you are, and we're out of time. Over to you, Alonso, in the studio. Thanks, Bianca. And now, how is this for an interesting yarn? A new wave of graffiti crime is covering the country, thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. 
These ball-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with small jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police say the knitted activities of the gang are legal because their woolly crimes are being done on public property without permission. The popularity of woolen graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up every night. But the problem is growing, police say and warn that if the midnight knitters aren't caught soon, every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will be warmly dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control. They're a close-knit group of dyed-in-the-wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. There is no real pattern to the crimes, a police spokesman said today. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped the risk and continue to pull their wool over the eyes on both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with our investigative reporter, Kane, who has an exclusive exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gang. Thanks Alonzo. I'm Ken Mahler and joining me in this top secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters gang. Hello Gabriella and thanks for joining us. Hello. What will lead you into the dark underworld of knitted graffiti? My grandma. Do you see yourself as a criminal? Uh, well my mum thinks I am but actually I actually do think I am too. Why? Because it's like graffiti, and graffiti is a crime, that's why. Apart from trees, lampposts, and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti with your woolens? Public art, cars, and a school. Do you think you can knit me a size 10 sweater? What colour? Pink for Kanye. Sure. Thanks for your time, Gabriella, of the Midnight News Gang. We now go over to Laura and Renee with the weather update. Thank you, Kane, and good evening, New Zealand. Let's have a good look at tomorrow's weather. Starting in the far north in Kaitaia, look out from some flash, pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. Moving down to Auckland, there'll be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions, but the, those are the conditions and you'll just have to accept them. There'll be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's taking a short holiday, but it is expected to be back for the weekend. In Napier and Hastings, the weather will sometimes be changeable, and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen there. In Taranaki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day, with no highlights at all. It'll be overcast and gloomy all morning but things should cheer up by the evening, so don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington will have another capital day. There will be no wind at all, and the day condition, conditions will be so pleasant they'll actually be classed as extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can expect to have a good day, meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim, and reading the newspapers but try to stay indoors, as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, which we will have some unreasonable rainfall, some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms, and a sum of very angry snow. And in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold, and unfriendly until late morning, when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. That's all from me. Remember, if it's raining outside, then that's the weather for you. Good night, New Zealand. Now it's back to the news desk with Alonzo and Olivia. Thanks, Renee and Laura. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's broadcast. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Until, Until then... I'm, I'm Alonzo. And I'm Olivia. For Room 2 News. Goodbye. Inohora. Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we feature an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene 1. Take 1.
take two.